reported earlier, the Iowa caucuses are just days away, and one candidate hoping to make an impact at the polls is Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. In part one of our two-part interview, EWTN's Monsi Alvarado talks to the presidential hopeful about the importance of faith in his life and career. Governor, it's great to be with you here. Thank you so much for giving us this time. Welcome to Tallahassee. Absolutely. As a Floridian, it's nice to be here. I want to hear a little bit about where your faith comes from. You've told us and the American people that your faith is important to you. But what was that like growing up Italian? Well, yeah, I mean, look, I, I was uh, in church every Sunday uh, from the time I can remember walking until uh, the time I, uh, I left my, my parents' household. And so that it was just something that was ingrained in me. Uh, I remember going to, uh, to, to college, you know, I, I was a blue collar kid. I got recruited to play baseball at places like Princeton and Yale. I didn't even know colleges were liberal. I mean, like I had no idea what I was getting into. I show up on the campus, just dressed like you would in, in West Central Florida, jean shorts, t-shirt, flip flops. I was a total fish out of water. It was a major culture shock. But you know, one of the things that I saw was Yale University, one of their mottos is for God, for country, for Yale. But yet I'm in some of these classrooms and like the anti-religion, anti-Christian, and I just never experienced that. I mean, where I was growing up, you know, you know faith in God, love of country, that those were just, it didn't matter, you're Republican, Democrat. I mean, that was kind of how it was. And then I experienced that. Um, and so I came into there with, I think, a foundation and people always talk about, well, these colleges, you know, they're indoctrinating kids, whatever. I can say I'm one of the few people to get through both Yale and Harvard and come out more conservative than when I went in. And part of that, I think, is because I had that foundation uh, of faith from a very young person uh, growing up. What do you do to strengthen that faith in God? Some people have prayer routines. Marky Mark talks about waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning and doing meditations. What does that look like for you when you have all of the pressures of governance, but also raising a family in a moment like this? Well, I think it's just, I think I really believe in the power of prayer. Um, and it's, uh, you know, you do have kind of a, um, a feeling, it's kind of a calmness just to know that, you know, ultimately we're in this world, but we're not of this world. And every single day when you're in this political thicket, they're throwing stuff at you, shooting at you, all this stuff. Uh, trying to kind of divert you off course of, of, of taking you away from that true north. And I think just being able to, to, to pray, being able to be in touch with, um, uh, with the Lord, it just gives you a way to just know none of that stuff really matters. Um, none of that stuff matters. And, and I can also tell you just in trials and tribulations that we've had, you know, when my wife um, in 2021 got diagnosed with breast cancer, at the time, we had a four-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. And so those types of diagnoses are hard for anyone, but I think especially when you have a mother of really young kids, to be in a situation where you know you could be you know having a, an incident where uh, she may not get through that, and then these kids would grow up without a mother. It's very very uh, shocking when that happens. It was really tough for us when we got the news. But I'll tell you this: the people that prayed for us um, over those weeks and months. Uh, had a huge impact, um, and it really lifted my wife's spirits. Uh, she had to go through a lot of really, really tough stuff, um, but she was able to do it. I obviously, as as the husband and the father, was there to to, to be to be supportive, uh, and she ended up coming out of that. I would say probably stronger now as a result. Not you know, she would never wish any of that anyone go through that, but I think she would tell you she's stronger as a result of having done that. That's hard. Um, I think what you're going through is particularly difficult for someone who wants to keep family life so private. You can imagine why voters would be interested in knowing everything about your life since celebrity candidates have become really the thing. I mean, with Hillary, with Obama, you had the rise of the celebrity candidate, but also the rise of candidates who portray themselves as people of faith but aren't necessarily really that in their hearts. What kind of an answer do you have to that curiosity? Well, I think one of the things that, that, that we bring, uh, my wife and I, is this country has a, has a crisis of family disintegration. Uh, you have forces that are actively hostile uh, to, to family, trying to undermine rights of parents. I mean, I had a, a debate with the governor of California, and I pointed out in California law, they allow minors from other states behind their parents' back to go into California and get uh, gender surgeries, which is basically mutilation. It's, it's, it's terrible. Parents don't even consent or know about this. That is a direct attack um, on parents and on family. 
And then we have so many kids that grow up without a father in the household. Uh, we've done a lot in Florida to launch a fatherhood initiative, to raise the importance of fatherhood, to make sure folks know they have responsibilities, but then also in situations where it's just not possible to have a father present, sometimes fathers are in, are in prison, uh, to, to promote mentorship. Because some of these kids, if someone takes an interest in their life, that could be the difference between them being productive or going in a really bad, bad direction. So I think one of the things we bring is uh, we show the importance of family because that's just who we are uh, as people. Uh, we, we, we try to bring our kids and involve them in this just because we want to spend more time with them. They've gotten to do a lot of stuff. I mean, prior to this campaign, they had never seen snow before. They are <laughs> Floridians, and so they didn't know. So they got to make snowman in New Hampshire, throw snowballs in Iowa. Um, they've gotten to go you know, all across the country, really, and, and see a, a lot of America, much different than when I was growing up, where you know, I was pretty much you know, in my town, and, and I'd travel for baseball, but that, that was about it. So, so there have been some good things, but I do think what we represent is, uh, you know, kind of a restoration of the idea that, that family really is the centerpiece of American life. If we have strong families, you know, we are going to have a strong country. Um, if families continue to disintegrate, you know, a lot of the problems that, that, we, that we deal with, you know, those are going to end up being magnified and those are going to grow. Uh, and government isn't the solution to all of this. I think government can play a role, uh, but certainly just as an example of this is important to us. We take our responsibilities as parents seriously, uh, education, parents' rights, all those things that flow. You know, we've had big fights in Florida over things like, is it appropriate to have gender ideology in elementary school? And we had to battle against Disney, the most powerful company in Florida over that. And I'd like to think I would have taken those strong stands anyways, but the fact that I'm a father of young kids, you know, it's really, really personal to me because I'm thinking to myself, I have a first grader, it's totally inappropriate to tell her that she can change her gender or that her gender is a choice. Um, and so I think that it's helped us uh, really be strong on education, parents' rights, and these core issues that matter so much to parents. And we will have part two of Monsi Alvarado's interview with Governor Ron DeSantis tomorrow.